to correct errors that we know are there. Also with this is not just EMS, but it would also do our fire reporting. So we would have a web-based system that all of the 250 people we have in our system would use one system for both fire and EMS reporting. And that is critical. Today we use the state system for EMS, so we use a computer over here, and we use a server-based system for the fire-based stuff. So you have to go back to the individual firehouse and type those reports in. This system is web-based. You could do it from any web-based computer that's available. The other issue today on the state system is we cannot have the CAD data, the data coming out of the 911 center, to populate some of our data in our EMS reports. So all of the data, the incident number, the address, all of that stuff that we might use for billing, we require the providers to type that in. And you can imagine there's errors when you're typing it in with a little stylus pen in the field trying to deliver patient care. We would have a patch. Part of this is a patch from the 911 center, so that information is automatically dropped into that system, and the provider in the field do not have to enter that information. Again, improving our efficiency uh, and improving our uh, accountability on that data. As I said, that's the system. Those are some of the benefits. All of the people in the system today, career or volunteer, will be using that one product. So it will be touched by everybody in the system out of all nine stations. The reoccurring cost, as I talked about, if we can control the back end of our data, how we're putting it in there, we will get better revenues uh, coming out of that. Uh, that's a fact. Because it's economic times and times are tight, you'll hear next month is, a, is another product to help pay for that 11000 about a $7,000 a year increase we can have on a revenue by collecting additional funds from out-of-county residents uh, as that's approved by the county administrator. We can go after out-of-county residents a little harder than we do in-county residents because in-county residents are paying taxes. So that would be another revenue stream to offset that 11000 But I truly believe by putting this system in place, other localities have done it, and they get a much higher return on their billing than we do. Billing is only one facet of it, but it is the facet that brings money into the county. And it is the, the reason why we must, in my opinion, have this in place. We can't use that state system, the free system. The state is not interested in billing, and it shows. Our revenue shows over the course of the last year. What I'm requesting of the board is we have the local money in hand through the grant to make the initial capital purchase. I've outlined some plan for the revenue for the years to come after the first year. Uh, in order for this to move forward, the board would have to approve the sole source vendor. One of the issues with the sole source is we're using those laptops we already have in the field. That's one key element. The other key element is the state's already bid this product out. They're using it themselves. It is an excellent product. Um, and again, we want to stay with a product that is very similar to the state because we still have to push our data up to them for reporting. It's legally required. So we want a system that's going to work well with theirs as well. What have questions of uh, Chief Loftus? Okay. Chief, um, first of all, I would, uh, I would disagree with you in saying it's a sole source. Okay. Based on what you said, the state has already procured it, right? That's correct. So we're basically buying off of a state contract, they've done competitive process, so you're not really sole sourcing it. Somebody in the state has. Sole source always has a bad connotation. Okay. So it's not really sole source. The, the real question I have is, uh, you said it's a web-based system. Yes, sir. And the information is going to be downloaded from the, the 911 system automatically. I think it's some, some sort of form-based thing where it... It's a direct patch in the system. It dumps. Okay. Correct. Now, what happens when you're down a Sparta Road and... There's no internet connection, there's no wireless, there's no phone connection. How are you going to have that data uploaded? Um, the, the, the laptops have the screen, the data, the collection point on them already. They don't need connectivity for that. Where they get their connectivity to get their ambulance times, as soon as they bring that patient in the ER, there's wireless connectivity in that ER. Okay. There's okay. wireless connectivity at that fire station. The computer itself already has the software on it. The wireless piece just brings in that CAD information and pushes it out to our server at the end. Okay, so you've got, I mean, I'm, I'm sure the salesperson and whatnot told you there's some sort of database already on your laptop. That is correct. And that's what will be used to upload, 
And then based on that, you'll, I guess, correlate that data when you get somewhere where there's wireless. That's correct. Okay. And we're using a, I mean, we're using the system today, but it's just the states. This one would be Caroline. So. Okay. The last, almost last question is you cut out the training in the proposal. I did. Why? I'm not going to pay. I've, I'm familiar with the system. The employees here are familiar with the system because they're using the state-based system today. We'll make changes. I'm not going to pay for a guy to fly from Minnesota $1,000 to hear when we can do it ourselves. Okay, Doesn't so make good sense. Okay, so you know it. All right. That's, yes. It's like buying a Ferrari and not knowing how to drive sometimes. If that's correct. You don't take the training. So, okay. Um, I think that was it. Sounds like a good, good position. Oh, the last one was why is the maintenance so high? It's really not maintenance. It's uh, they call it SAS today. That's software as a service. That's yeah. what you. Oh. Oh, it's cloud based. It's you cloud based. You don't own the software. That's correct. So it's a it's a subscription fee is really what it is. Essentially, correct. Okay. okay. The initial cost a little higher for setup, customization, training of one administrator, etc. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Other questions, Mr. Seeley? Do we, will we have any additional server costs for bringing this software in other than what we currently have? No. It won't be on our servers here resident, no. Again, it's software yeah, as a service. It's being hosted by the company itself. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? We own the data. We own the data. Here's the other piece. Right now when the, we have a guy in the field, gets to the hospital, sends his data up to the state, we don't have any more. The state has it. So if the state loses that data, we lose billing money. This system gives us a redundant piece because in the field we'll send it to our server. Our server, we can correct it as we need to, and it sends it to the state server. So we always have a redundant copy. I'm sorry, not the county server. In the cloud okay. server. One, one little tidbit. Sir. Um, cloud data, it's, it's, really, it's really the same as if we own it other than that server sits somewhere else, like Minnesota maybe, or you know, South Dakota, who, you know, who cares? If anything happens to that server, we don't have any data backup. So they're going to provide data backups as part of this process. Yes, but we also, as soon as it hits our server and we, we make sure the data is correct, we send it to the state's server. So if one of those two things goes down, there's still a copy of the data. That's why there's some, for us, there's some redundancy here that we do not have today because we don't have paper. There's never too much redundancy when it comes to data. Right. Okay. So we have data we're holding in, in the state. Or airplanes, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So that motion to Good approve. Job. So moved. Second. All right. Motion by Mr. Thomas, second by Mr. Black, that we approve uh, this uh, expenditure for the Red Fire and Rescue Data Management System software. Discussion on the motion. All in favor, vote by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. And the motion is carried. Thank, Thank you. you, Chief Officer. The next item is discussion of distribution of county information to citizens. Mr. Cully, are you going to handle that? Uh, I'm going to try. All right. Hey, I'm sure you can do a good job at it. Um, it's, it's come up that uh, maybe that uh, we needed to go back to some form of distribution of information. Uh, there have been times when there were... Um, messages in the newspaper by the county administrator and or newsletters that the county was uh, putting out and so I just needed some direction as to how far you may want to want us to try to put information out that's not seen as some sort of you know one-sided necessarily I uh, you know what thoughts y'all might have on that I, I, I'm the other person I like that idea, and maybe, maybe you could do like we used to do the, the county newsletter, but instead of mailing it, you might have it on our website. website right. So it's a PDF or a you know, Word document that's on our website. We don't have the mailing costs, but we can reach 30,000 people. Well, we can reach infinity because whoever's on the website, on the web. I think it's a good idea to, to access people. And it's a good idea. We all, I need to update my website. Comments? Yeah, I, I, I like the idea. I just think it's important that we, uh, I think it's important that the whole story, uh, that all of the actions that take place are out there where people can, it's not that you're trying to be one-sided, but as you're trying to uh, put 
put out there. The, yeah, put all perspectives out there and put the entire uh, story, the rest of the story, if you will, uh, out there. People see it. All right, so I'm assuming that there's no objection to the county administrator um, developing a uh, information uh, process to, to share with the citizens. I just, I just have one qu one question on that. When you would that come to the board first, or before you put it out there, or would you just put it like at the county administrator's report? Would that come to a board for approval for first, or would it be? Um... Uh, you know, my thoughts are is the fact that if it comes to the board first, then it very well become come, becomes. You may have one thought. I may have another thought. It becomes political. It, it start, if the county administrator is going to put something out, I would hope <laughs> he's going to try to put it out there. That's going to represent what the actions sure. actually were. And not sure. trying to make it shape sure. to uh, understand so people see my side or your side mm -hmm. of the view. He'll look at it from a county administrator's perspective. So I don't know that it needs to come to the board of supervisors. My personal thoughts are just not necessarily, necessarily needs to come to the board of supervisors to get our approval before he puts something in the newspaper. We didn't I, I would think that it's basically informational right. for the citizens to to be aware. I, I would think it's not should not be something that's slated in one direction or the other as far as approval or disapproval or acceptance or not. I would think you're just talking about information or items that would be of benefit to the citizens of Carlin. So having said that, I don't see a, a need for it to come to the board. But, uh, it's like anything else. If, we, if, it's, if the practice starts <coughs> and it turns out to be an issue, then we deal with it at that time. But I don't think we should put restrictions on it before you get an opportunity to try. Well, I think it's important that it be, be timely, timely information. Um, and if he waits to bring it before the board, uh, you know, he certainly have to wait two weeks before it, the information is going to be able to come back to the board to be approved. And, and I just think it's important for timely information to be out there. Can we, can I, I guess I'm just looking for an example of what we're talking about. And I don't know what he's talking about. Well, that's why I'm kind of looking but, for the example. But I think that we're talking about, for instance, the board recent the budget. I think there's something there needs to be a, a uh, information items out there as to what the budget process is and how budget is going to be developed and as being proposed. Uh, the tax increases. I think it needs to be out there as to what the tax increases were and what they were for. Uh, I think that a lot of the decisions this board has had to make over the past six months, uh, four months or five months, whatever it is, that this new board took, took effect, I think need to be explained. The, the fire ordinance, I mean, that fireworks ordinance, that's, that's one that has been a lot of, a lot of misinformation thrown around. And uh, I think that it's things such as that. And the other part is, my thought is, he just reports, for the most part, the important issues that took place at the board meeting. Call me. Maybe you would know, and if you don't, um, that's fine. But when uh, Percy did the newsletter, he just basically did that in the county administrator's office, and then you mailed them out, right? We didn't. Yeah, that never came to the board or anything. No, we've never had it. No, we've never had it. Before. It's kind of. Yeah, it should be general information. I'm sure there's going to be things in there that, you know, our majority of the board said this. You know, the majority of the board said that. The board unanimously. I'll, I'll give it a try. I don't think, you know, he works, the county administrator works for the board, uh, so I don't know that he's going to go bad-mouthing one of the board members and, uh, in a I news can, article I can take that, <laughs> that, that uh, jeopardized his, uh, his tenure. So I think that's, that's probably a moot point. County administrator's report. We got a calendar in there. I don't think so. It was more for direction to make oh, sure yes. that you were aware that we were going to try some sort of message and or newsletter. Okay. And we understand web-based as best we can. And, okay. and also, I think it's important that Mr. Cully get before the groups that, uh, uh, that he can and will to explain what the county decisions the county uh, the board has made. 
we put we put an update in the calendar. I will let you know that uh, I, had, I had told y'all during the uh, my hiring I was going to be off out of town this coming coming week. So yes, I, I will yeah. be will be out of the, out of the state for a while. But uh, I'm sure you'll be in capable hands with Mr. Parton. I'm only a phone call away. I will have my cell phone. So back again come, already. Back again. He gets Listen, the plaque he, and now he's back. He went to uh, the Disney World on me the first week. He did. He, did. <laughs> he skipped out on you. That's all we have. We do have your cell phone number. You do, yes, and I'll make sure that everybody has it. And I have it with me all the time. All right. Closing board comments, Mr. Black. Yeah, I, I got a couple. Um, I know um, for all of us up here, um, and we have vastly different views on things, um, and we disagree a lot, but one of the things that I'd like to see, um, maybe starting this year sometime, um, even though we have vast differences, I, I don't think that we can just kind of patch the pipe from year to year and hoping it gets better. Um, I think what we need to really do is we need to sit down with key players in this county um, and kind of figure out what are the needs going to be from each of the departments over the next several years. What are the needs of the sheriff's department? What are the needs of the school system? What are the needs of the fire department? Um, so that way, I understand emergencies come up, but so that way we can kind of plan um, in advance what what the needs are. And, and I, I mean, on this board, since I've been here, I, I really, if it's happening, I haven't seen it. Um, and I think that we need to do a better job. I'm not saying that we need to necessarily interfere with that, um, but I think it's something that a path that we kind of need to start going down, planning for uh, future budgets. So that way we, we may not run into this problem um, down the road or as, as an intense situation as we have now. Now, maybe that's a pipe dream, but I just think the idea of, well, get me till next year and next year will be better, I, I just don't think that's common sense planning, um, and I don't think anyone would do it in their own household. Uh, the second thing, um, and, and, t and being a teacher in United States history, there's, there's a book by Helen Hunt Jackson called A Century of Dishonor. And it's uh, basically about the treatment of the uh, United States treatment of Native Americans um, and uh, broken promises. <clears throat> and I feel like with the school system, we're there. Um, we said we would flat fund the schools. We did not. We said we were going to take 200000 from them. We ended up taking 350 tonight that wasn't on the board. Um, so that's just my feeling. And I know everyone's got different opinions on so forth, but thank you. Thank you, Mr. Black. Mr. Taylor, do you have any comments? I have no, uh, no closing comments at this time. Mr. Underwood? Uh, I do have just a couple, Mr. Chairman. Yes, please. Um, in regards to the, the budget, and uh, again, Mr. Black, and certainly we see differently the budget and the budgeting process, the, the reality of it is, is that we fully fund the school, whether it's federal money, state money, or local money, it comes out of our pockets. So our responsibility here on this board, I believe, is to do what's best for all 30,000 citizens in Carolina. And that's the charge that we have. We, we to have a different view on how we should do it. For me, if the school could level spend, and that's what I'm going to say from now on, level spend, then I think we take a different look at additional funds. What I would like to, to say is I would like for members of the school board to come here and be honest from day one about the numbers and the amount of money that they have that's generated. Then we can work together to make sure it works best for everyone. But we were getting different numbers up till last Wednesday when I wasn't there, when it all kind of came together. But in order to do this, we need all of the facts on the table. Um, secondly, I want to say that as a board, we, we want to support each other in the idea that we're a team. Doesn't mean we always agree, but certainly means that we're a team and we have to begin to talk and support each other rather than leave here and go out and badmouth a person because you don't agree with the ideology. That's not how we do business. That's not how I do business. So 
I would appreciate if you have anything to say about me or to me, you say it to my face. Thank you. Mr. Seeley, you have any closing comments? Yes, Mr. Chairman. In along the same vein as, as Mr. Black, we, we, we need to start planning. And one of the things that we have still not done is worked on the master water plan. We were supposed to have a meeting in January. We were supposed to have a meeting in February. And it's now almost June, and we still haven't even begun that. And I think when you talk about planning process and needs, I think that that is the prime example of what we've missed. We haven't, we haven't put the time in, and it can't be an hour before a board meeting, because I think that particular plan is going to be a lot of work. And I think that goes along with we won't get surprised, because we don't understand what's going on. So I'd like to see us set up some time to actually work on the water plan, because I think that is one of the things that we really lack. We, we've, we've not put the time in it. Um, along the funding lines, I, I just, I think we also need to do a better job at looking at where we're at and where we're going. And, and I agree that I'm not sure next year is going to be better either. And I'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Mr. Thomas, closing comments? I'll pass, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, you know, I would like to say that, that when we talk about the water, water master plan, uh, it's not factual that the board, now the entire board probably hasn't met to do anything and discuss anything. But there's certainly <laughs> been discussions with, with others to help us arrive at, at some type of understanding as to the direction we want to go in as far as the master water plan is concerned. Uh, Mr. Sheba, we've, we've met, uh, we met last, I believe it was November or December. Uh, Mr. Thomas, myself, Mr. Sheba, and met with uh, another locality to, to try to figure out how that would fit into our master water plan uh, in April. I believe it was April the 17th met with another locality uh, to see how that would fit into master water plan to say so to say that we we've, we've done nothing is certainly not a, it's not factual uh, but we as a board have not been able to discuss it because we really haven't had the had the the dialogue or been able to get the dialogue going between the localities we've, we've met with because they have a board that they have to work through as well uh, so so we are working we are trying to move ahead and we are trying to develop a master uh, water plan, and, and it will be developed. Uh, but it's just a matter of how it's going to come together. Uh, as far as breaking promises, uh, I don't. I don't believe this board has, has broke any promises uh, to, to any group, whether it be the sheriff's department or any other any other group. We indicated early on that it was going to be level funding. You're absolutely correct. However, we, we found that that was not going to be able to happen when evidently the county staff uh, come to the conclusion that there's no way they were going to get through a tax increase that would have allowed that to have happened. So they proposed a less of a tax increase, and I can tell you it was difficult to even get that through. But the facts are, if they had have come back with the tax increase proposal that really was needed to be able to do the things that we have talked about, uh, then it would have been more than four cents. And again, I, they evidently didn't see the support on the board to get a, a six cent and uh, didn't know they were going to get a four cent until the very last minute. In fact, I believe the night of the vote for tax increases when the fourth vote probably came into play to give a tax increase. So I don't think we broke promises. I think that once the budget process really started to, to get into full swing, it was determined that, hey, we're not going to be able to level fund. The sheriff took cuts. Everybody took cuts, uh, and as well as the school took cuts. So I don't believe we, we broke any promises. It's like anything else. Things change as you really get into uh, looking at them in, a, in the big picture and not looking at them in a bundle. Uh, so I don't think that was the case. Can I just uh, add one thing, Mr. Taylor? One thing, Mr. Taylor. And only one it. thing. Maybe two things. Uh, 
No, but, one uh, thing. One thing. Okay. Um, we have, most departments have a capital improvements plan. And in those capital improvements plans, we usually, and I don't know, I haven't been on the board. I'm just coming back. But I know prior to my time on the board, we had capital improvements plans. And they were usually out over four to five years, sometimes as much as 20 years for long range. So when a department identified a need, it was usually put into the capital improvements plan. And we generally tried to work towards being able to finance that. So it's not like we are working on a monthly basis here. I, you know, I don't think we are. Um, I don't know if the capital improvements plan are, are still as much involved as they were at one time, but, uh, but we certainly did that. Uh, and that was a, a method by which we knew what departments wanted and what they felt they needed. And, and we also tried to come up with ways to address those. Uh, and, and really the last thing is, if you're not going to generate any revenue, you can sit here all day long. It takes revenue to do what we do. And if you're not willing to generate any revenue to do that, and then you're willing to take away from the revenue that you were not even willing to propose, we could be here all night. If you don't have any money, it don't get paid. Thank you. I don't think we're going to need a closed uh, closed meeting. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Motion made, Mr. Taylor, seconded by Mr. Underwood, that we adjourn. Discussion. All in favor, aye. 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 Board is adjourned.